and then to be attacked by some of the mods uh so you know i just i just wanted to remember our boy wolfie day 108 i was after some pristine there was individual advancements to get both the withered skelly and the gas pristine so my aim here was to get both the withered was fairly easy all i had to do was run trials and at the end i got the advancement the next was to get the gas which turned out to be a little more tedious than anything you can't run trials with gas which kind of makes sense because they're really destructive so what you had to do was use the model, build that up to faulty or I guess basic tier, and then put it in the simulation t chamber to get the pristine needed. I also worked on changing the platform under my storage area to iron, trying to somewhat keep my 100 day promise. On day 109, I started changing the arena from the simple stone platform we had to an obsidian platform due to me having more obsidian to play around with. I then realised that I would have to add something else because obsidian wasn't enough aesthetically, and started smelting emeralds. What? Emeralds? Emeralds to make a emerald border on said platform. In order to smelt- hello? In order to smelt smoothly, I also changed the hopper thing I had set up, so that all the ingots and blocks would automatically fall into chests, which would end up being the rest of my evening. That led me into day 110, where I actually smelted the emerald and made the smeltery taller, so I would smelt even more in one go, and finished off most of the arena. I was still a little short on emeralds, but, you know, eventually I would fix that. And that was my first 10 days into 200 days. Day 111, I started by making the exchange tool. Not only was this an advancement, but it would also come in handy for the building that I needed to do and switching the materials on our platform. I also did some other stuff, but I can't really tell you what. But as I laid my head down to rest, I completed I'm so aghast, what the heck, the end of all matters, and the truth is out there. So I'm gonna assume it was deep mob stuff. On day 112 and 113, I spent it battling the Twilight Lish, Leash? Still, still don't know how to pronounce that correctly. By the end of these 200 days, I want to have battled all of the Twilight mobs. In our 100 days, we took out the Naga, leaving us freely to take out the Lish, Leash. Basically, Twilight Forest has an unlocking system, and as you kill one boss, you are able to unlock and explore the area of another boss until you get to the disappointing final boss in that big white tower. I still have no idea how to strategically kill the leash, but basically hit the projectiles back and hope for the best. When I got home, I decided to work on some remodeling and boarded my storage area with some coal blocks, working for more of an aesthetically pleasing platform than, you know, what we have. It, it, it's an effort to make my platform less plain, but uh, you know, uh, you know, I'm I'm not I'm not good at aesthetic. It, it, you get it. Before day 114, I cut and watched back the end of my 100 day video, in which I said if I got 20 likes, one for each subscriber I had at the time, I'll change my platform to iron or obsidian. It was very clear that unfortunately iron wasn't an option, it would take far too long for me to gather, so instead I decided to change my entire platform to obsidian to fulfil the promise that I kind of felt bad about. Just after I did a little platform cleanup, smeltery expansion, and some more smelting, I would then set off to completely change my wooden platform to obsidian. So then we moved on to day 115. It wasn't exactly the first thing, but at the time of writing this with the video at 78 likes, I have to actively honour my decision and change the wooded platform to obsidian with specks of iron and other materials that basically just aren't wood. My aim is to make more and more buildings with oak wood or oak logs. I started the day with more smelting. I needed as much iron as I could get, and then started the transition around my Inferium farm setup, with obsidian replacing all the logs. For some reason I started manually and then decided I would use the very useful exchange tool that I, that I made for this specific reason. One of the specs of iron I would change is the house. Since it wouldn't take up 
too much, I decided to start exchanging the platform to iron while smelting and working on my storage. I mentioned the mega chest and the issues I was having, so I basically spent the bulk of these days trying to fix or work around that. By the end of day 118, I had started exchanging all of the wood on my platform to obsidian. And for the most part, that continues on today 119. When completed, I started working on the logic processor stuff, and right before I went to bed, I completed the long live wait, live long and processor advancement. Day 120, to be honest, not much was done. I started working towards the rest of the me stuff. Wait, what? Emmy. Emmy storage stuff. And created the my cell for the advancement. Do I mean me again? I don't, I don't know. Um, I don't know how to use that cell and I never went back to it. So arguably a waste of resources, but the advancement was complete. The last thing for the day was to make a actual efficient storage cell. Day 121 to 122. In order to complete the final advancements of these tabs, I made some boron. I had enough ingots from when I went to twilight and had farmed enough inferium that I was able to make some seeds. Once I had enough boron, I mixed the boron with steel and made some ferroboron. The storage journey is never ending and whilst making the inscribers, I tried out the auto folder. Spoiler, I hated it, threw it away almost immediately. Anyway, I had enough fur boron to make the pro, uh, the press um, that I needed and I got it going. After that, I made the lithium seeds, farmed it and smelted it to get tough alloy. And then the last press I needed to knock out two advancements. The last advancement I would need to complete this entire tab slash the you win challenge was technically achieved day 122, but I'm going to give it to 121 because I basically worked all the way through the night. I mean, it was a lot of work and I ended up bunching these two days together anyway. Day 123, I started with storage and don't worry, I'm sick of it as well. I then moved on to farming some inferium and decided to expand the farm area. I wanted to make it different than the flat land that I've been using so far. So I decided to build up and because I no longer allowed myself to use oak wood or oak wood logs, I chose to use quartz since it's basically free and they're really good building materials, aesthetically wise. At this point, I felt odd and it felt like someone was watching me, but if so, where? And then I saw him. I thought I had a friend, someone who I could spend this lonely world with, but nope, he hates me and is out to kill me. Now, I don't know who Sin Killer J is. I'm going to assume it's some um, YouTuber because a lot of these mobs are replicas of YouTubers, I think. I don't know. But um, yeah, no, this was creepy as hell. He was like Batman and I don't really like Batman. So uh, he 100% had to go. Was it worth it? You're asking? Yes, it was. Back to building. So on day 124, I continued this and planted the lithium and boron seeds above to make the bottom floor fully inferior. After completing the platform, I then took a trip to the end to get some chorus stuff and more importantly, the elytra. When I got back to the overworld, I started jumping on chorus fruits to turn it into a liquid. And this jumping continues into day 125. Once I had enough liquid chorus, I put some in a bucket, I made some ender crystals, and then finally made some dragon's breath. I then started looking at making the aircraft and then committed to it. And after a short while, I had my own airship. And since I was on a roll with the advancements, I started making some compact dimension stuff. On day 126, I did absolutely nothing. And then I took a trip to the Lost Cities for the sole purpose of taking quartz to use as a building material. And right at the end of the day, I actually started doing something and started to set up the compact dimensions. I continued building this platform on day 127 um, and setting up the compact computers using torches as a template in order to stop mobs from spawning and keep the platform lit. I decided to add a touch of glowstone and get rid of the torches. And just like that, the compact dimensions platform was done and arguably 
my best looking area. Day 129, uh, sorry, day 128. Now that everything was set up, I could start working on completing the compact dimensions advancement. And that was to build the maximum capacity room. I would think of ways to use this room, but like most things, I never committed to using it. And just like that, the job was done. I never really did anything after that. Um, I need to use every Tinker's mob for both weapons and armor and decided to make an axe so I could have a tool I could modify. But after that, the day was over and it was time for bed. On day 129, my aim was Tinker's mods, and somehow that landed me in the twilight. The best way co to complete a task I find is to avoid it. So, the first thing I did in Twilight Zone was take on the labyrinth. It is very easy to get lost, so whilst I was looting chests, I found the maze coin. When wrapped around paper, it gives me a labyrinth maze, which makes it super easy to navigate the maze and get to the mushroom boss. It is also an advancement, so that's a bonus. With the map in hand, I was able to find the boss room and then very easily take him down. With the mushroom completed, I could now defeat the Hydra, and although it took a bit of time, eventually I was able to take it down, and that was day 130. On day 131 to 33, I decided my twilight days were done and went home. I didn't really do much, which is starting to become a common theme. A lot of what I did do, however, was the Tinker upgrade. Was It was Tinker's upgrade related. A quick trip to the Lost Cities to fight mobs and hope to upgrade my weapons. And then back to the Tinker upgrades to upgrade my weapons. Procrastination. To sum up day 134. The word procrastination comes to mind. I basically made a helipad for our airship on top of our watchtower for absolutely no reason. In order to switch things up a bit for the materials in this build, I used copper and chiseled endstone for the landing pad. And then glowstone and leaves for the accents. And honestly, I really liked it. This no oak deal I had for myself was working out pretty well. But yeah, I made this helipad for no reason. I always felt like this storage work would kill me eventually, and on day 135 it almost did. I was mining a block to place another shipment crate. I didn't have my air charm so I couldn't fly, and because I didn't realise this, it came as a full surprise to me when I fell through my platform right into the void. Luckily, I did have... I did have my wing charm, so I was able to fall slowly, angle my fall, and gracefully land in my infinite pool. And back to work I went. On day 136 was some more Tinker stuff. Honestly, nothing interesting, so let's move on. And then we get to days 137 to 139. Transcripts from my notes. And this is why you don't record at night, stupid. 
in order to get this video out, I wanted to use every spare moment I had to record. So I would work on editing videos ASAP. So if I got home at 9 p.m. after work, I would then try and record some days. And this was a failed attempt to that. For day 137 to 139, I somehow completely forgot to press the record button. Maybe one day we could film one of these challenges and have a smooth recording, but this one ain't it. Either way, according to my notes, I made some mechanism stuff, made a platform for the new machines, uh, waited for some mechanism stuff, and then made some storage energy, or made some energy? Stored some energy? Either way, I didn't get up to much anyway, but yeah, this is why you don't record at night. I spent a lot of these days crafting everything related to Age of Power. None of it was really clear. I know I used al the alloy furnace to make tough alloy, but um, I, I, I don't really have a clear set of what else I was doing. It wasn't an eventful couple of days, but it was a successful couple of days. At the end of day 141, I was able to complete Age of Power, and in the advancement's own words, I won. So the next day was really about resting and making food, more specifically, the ultimate sandwich, Dark Toasto. All day 142 was prep work, getting the vegetables and the ingredients ready to combine. And that is what I did on day 143. But I did it in the wrong order, so I kind of had to do it again. Always read the manual, kids. Eventually, towards the end of the day, Dark Toaster was done. And that was another advancement knocked off the list. And then, for no reason, I ended the day with some more deep mob trials. Or for some reasons that I have yet to be aware of. And we continued on. Day 144 was basically cleanup day. Day 145, I completed maximum overdrive and started working on compressed sand. Day 146 was all about cookies. I set up the cookie singularity maker. I know I could do this faster. Well, I envision I can do it faster, but for now, I wanted to see it working in the background and then research how to do it more efficiently. On day 147, I went to the twilight because I wanted to start getting rid of some of the mobs. Well, the ones that were left at least. The first mob I was after was the knight, so I spent 147 running around this maze trying to find it. And on day 148, I did find it and killed it quite easily. And then I was able to move on to the next mob, the Yurga. So a few moments into day 149, I found the enchanted forest that houses the questing ram, which was kind of awesome because that meant I didn't have to look for it later. I then explored the twilight forest for a bit before going home and starting on the advancement to basically make everything with twilight wood. I managed to make a couple canopy stuff and then tried to make a canopy button and I couldn't. I tried to trap the trap door, the pressure plate and another button but to no avail. I decided it was impossible and took another trip back to the twilight forest. This trip would take me into day 150 where I tried for maybe the third time to go to the white forest but it kept, get, it kept getting poison, basically I would get poison rain damage. I explored some more and went home. Where the air charms had come in handy, I did need a better means of flying, so I decided to start working towards superior armor so that I could fly with more speed and not have to worry about recharging my charms. So this meant making leather, armor cores, and eventually superior ingots. The armor cores needed to be leveled up with each Ethereum thing like the ingots and by the end of the day in order to get Superium core I realized I had to get some more never stars. So I had to fight some withers and as the sun was rising into day 155, wait sorry 151, I was able to defeat the wither and get a never star. So I wanted to set up the wither deep mob so that I can get wither pristine put that in the simulator to get never stars without having to actually physically fight the wither. So I had to kill the wither five more times to get the model to reach basic tier and my job was basically done at... at least I thought it was. Just before the night ended I decided that I wanted to level the model up one more time so this meant I had to take on more withers this time two at a time. I'd spent 
the whole of day 151, killing rivers with a total of 9. satisfied I had enough never stars I made the last three superior cores I needed I now had to work on the ingots we ended up day 152 on prudentium ingots with a lot more work to go on day 153 apparently I gave up on superior armor because commitment issues maybe and I decided to start getting the wool I need to get the questing ram to give me stuff. With all the wool completed, I started feeding it to the questing ram and then had to reevaluate which one I missed because I was missing some and had no idea which. Eventually I found the missing wool and exchanged it for some goodies that at this stage, I don't actually need. Between the days 154 and 156, I started to make s'mores. The first step was getting carrots. I needed this to trade for pork so I can make gelatin. I didn't meant to I guy, but is it still but? Anyway, I traded my carrots for pork, every vegan's nightmare, and threw them into the manufactory and waited for my gelatin. The next step was to smelt it with some water to hydrate it. After the gelatin was hydrated, I had to smelt the sugar to make some liquid marshmallow, and before we knew it, it was ready to smelt into some solid marshmallow. The next step was chocolate, and luckily it was very easy. All you needed was cocoa beans and milk, and with that, things were smelted and chocolate ingots were made. We now needed to make some flour. Once I had the flour, I made a pressurizer, uh, because the pressurizer would crush the flour into graham crackers. I then put it all together, I made two, combined them to make a double s'more, and that was the achievement completed to end off the day. Day 157, I dedicated it to finding the Snow Queen, but first I had to do some cleanup, and on were my twilight journey. The first thing I did was find a medium hollow hill and defeat a red cat sapper. I stuck around to defeat some mobs, and then on day 158, moved on to find the Snow Queen. I took a little pit stop in uh, to fight the Naga because the map started to reveal what we were looking for. I pulled uh, at a yeti spot to get rid of the snow queen's protector and for no reason i did this three more times
I then infl- in- hello? I then infiltrated the Snow Queen's castle, defeated some mobs, and was kind of too lazy to make my way up from the inside of the building. Um, so I just air chummed my way up and broke in. Before I knew it, I killed the Snow Queen, got her head, and was ready to face off with the giants. Before I went home, I stopped off at a large hollow hill to kill an invisible thing. And then I went home. Starting into day 159, I made the arctic fur and dyed it to complete the getting in fashion advancement. I realised there was a problem with my shipping crates. It would cap some of the capacity of things, so of ambers and such, so I wasn't getting many resources. And realised this is something I had to fix. Again. Because storage stuff is internally killing me. I then went about and made some fiery armor and a fiery sword just to get the advancement. This would lead me into day 161. I went to the troll cave to gain access to the big white fortress by getting the cinder thing. Once acquired, I traversed the building and got to the top to find this arena thing, which is home of the last boss in the twilight, a sort of OP goblin. And with him defeated, I officially won the twilight. I still had a couple things to complete. I needed to go back to the Eurogast Tower to do some weird thing. And I needed to get back to a labyrinth to find the Maze Breaker. But for the most part, every single twilight mob was complete, was dead, was over. We had one twilight, basically. I proceeded to search for the Maze Breaker on day 162. It's hidden in a secret room, and I believe this is that room, so I carefully mined in, and yep, the moment I saw the sand, I knew I was in the correct place. With a little more mining, there it was, I had found it, and achieved the breaking in maze advancement. On day 163 to 164, I basically just AFK'd whilst hugging a cactus. 165 to 166, I went back to modifying armor and tools here and there. Once I could do no more, I went back to Superium to try and make the ingots I needed for my flying armor. 167 to 168, I finally made enough ingots to make the armor I was working on for like 7 days. And I immediately looked at ways to make it better and finally after setting it up ages ago, used the enchantment table and also realized some things can't be enchanted, including our new armor. I made an empowered enchanter, but yeah, that didn't work, so that was a waste of time, really. I'm sure there are more efficient ways to make things work, but I don't know any of them, so I always take the basic route. On 169, I wanted to make my Inferium grow quicker, so I started to make growth crystals, which meant I needed potions. Once I had that, I can make the tier 1 growth crystal and continue to make the tiers after. After some more potion making, by the end of the day, I managed to make the tier 3 crystal. I then started on working on the upgrade for my superior armor, so night vision and speed and whichever one I wanted. On day 170, I started to set up my fish farm. I was hoping some way or another through fishing I would be able to get mending so that I didn't have to keep making superior armor. And after making sure it was working, I was on to the next thing. Day 171 to 174, the majority of these days was just cleaning up chests and adding stuff to chests and all that good stuff, but nothing was really completed. I then went back to the hunting dimension to set up a platform. It failed miserably. I don't think obsidian can be used as a base, so that plan was quickly wrapped. Day 175 has absolutely no footage, but my notes said I was in the twilight, so that's probably why. Day 176, also, barely any footage, and my note said I set up my superior armor, but I'm gonna assume I forgot to press record again. Day 177, the first thing I did was disenchant a fishing rod, so I can get mending to make my superior armor infinite. I also started making the charms and upgrading my armor that way. For the rest of the day, I used the uncrafting table from the Twilight mod, you can find this in chests in Hollow Hills, I believe it's either the medium or large. And I worked on making all the wood items I needed to get that twilight achievement. 
So some of the objectives in the Twilight Advancement could actually be achieved but it was a challenge on trying to find it. I read that a lot of the saplings like the time sapling and, ra and the rainbow sapling could be found in leaf dungeons that exist in trees we've been ignoring since the one we broke open in the first twilight journey. So all of day 178 was spent looking for these dungeons and chests. Between the days 179 and 180, I was switching between making all the wood stuff and exploring the leaf dungeons for all the saplings I needed. And that continued to where eventually I had found all the saplings except one, the rainbow sapling. Day 181 to 183, I started in the Lost Cities to, to play with my new pistol and to try and kill some creepers for Creeper Pristine. I also tried to do something with the hunting I mentioned but this failed uh, for a second time. However that wouldn't last long and eventually I would go back to set up a stone platform and got to work to kill mobs. I also wanted to make a zombie spawner so that meant I would have to create a zombie egg first which meant exploding chickens. Once I created the smaller I then had to increase or I guess decrease the tip to zero which is actually an achievement and would eventually break our game but for now it was a really great way at upgrading my weapons and stuff so i spent most my time killing zombies for the rest of day 183. on day 184 i had finally achieved the modifier master advancement oh yeah it, you can you can decide whether it was a little cheaty because i basically just made new tools that i will never use to add the mobs that i couldn't make on my go-to tools but i still got the advancements and that to be honest was day 184. i also noted that maniacal dendrologist cannot be done on day 185 with success of my last advancement, I figured I'd do the same for armor and make a new full set and eventually I got God of Mod them all. The last one I had to do was the yo-yo and that would be all the Twinker Tinker quests done. Day 186 I went to the hunting dimension to, well, well to hunt. My intentions were to level up yo-yos I had and honestly I kind of just enjoyed killing mobs this way. It was very satisfying, but I noticed a lag to start to occur and then decided that was enough for today. I had to take a break. And so came day 187. I was spending a lot of time in the hunt in Dimension, just like the day before, and I had yet to die in this mod pack. I had gotten braver and braver the longer time went by, but it left me reckless. And I wasn't even filming at this point, I was so confident. So all the footage I have is of my grave. I had survived 186 days without dying. And for me, that's kind of impressive. That's the whole reason why I never actually hardcored this well, because I knew I am very prone to dying in Minecraft. But the time had come. I had died. So I'll take the win here if I must say so myself but it was a uh it was an L in the fact that I can no longer say I was undefeated in this mod pack. Day 188 was much the same. I had spent time in the hunting dimension leveling up my yo-yo when suddenly the game crashed. I think the tick was too high or too low for my system to handle but Whenever I would hop into the hunting dimension, my game would crash, so I had to come up with a different way to mod the yo-yo. This moves us on to day 189. With the game crashing and me having to reset it every time, I forgot to press record to show the last mod added to the newly built yo-yos I had made. It was a workaround, and I had done it for my armor, I had done it for my tools, so why wouldn't I do it for my yo-yo? 
I mean, I had lost my mob farm, so I was out of options anyway. But I ended up getting the OYO Master achievement. I would go on to make some compressed sugar, which is also an advancement, and I know I can take the sugar, but it wasn't that deep yet. I then started working on the Nothing Ever Matters advancements, which was deep mob related. I basically had to get all the pristine matters for each mob module there was. And then I would be done. This wouldn't be hard, but it would go on to be kind of tedious. On day 90, I was back in the Twilight because I needed to increase the Twilight Glacier model and where the Twilight, the last Twilight achievement I needed was basically broken and couldn't be achieved without cheating, I wanted to do as much as I could and one of those last things I needed was the Rainbow Oak Leaves or Sapling and or Sapling, whatever. So I figured I would go on a little hunt and I remembered from my PO3 world that sometimes Rainbow oak trees would appear in the night mazes, and as you could see, I was a little excited to find one. And that basically was the end of my day. On day 191, I made a black hole machine. I know it's an advancement that I would have to do, and I just wanted to get a little tiny minuscule head start. I also proceeded to build a platform above my farm so I could have a place for resource hogs whenever I was actually ready to commit to making them. And now we come to the last few days. Day 192 to 193 was all about shulker kills in order to get pristine matters. I put the shulker module into the simulation and waited productively-ish. Whilst I was waiting, I decided to build a platform away from my base for a secret project to be revealed on day 200. Once I was done with that platform, I went back to the sim to collect the matter. And to end the day, I grew and killed some guardians in order to make some guardian matter. And just like that, on day 194 and 95, the guardian matter was done and all that was left was blue slime. I made some blue slime seeds, I don't think I could say that again. And just like, and just like the guardian, I killed them all to rank up the module put it in the sim and before I knew it nothing else matters was complete and that would be the last advancement I would achieve for this video. Day 196 to 97 I was working on that secret project I mentioned so you can't see anything but uh, that's what's going on in these couple days. Day 189 sorry day 198 to 199 I put up my trophies on the mob grinder for no reason at all and then started working on resource hogs. I eventually had to make every single one and knowing this would be a task. So for these two days I got to work and tried to make as many of the resource hogs the simple ones as I could. I realized for the iron the steel resource hogs I would have to actually make the iron into dust and that wasn't happening in these two days. But after that, that was it. Just like that our 200 day journey has ended. I appreciate all the love and support on my first video and anything you show on this video. YouTube algorithm isn't creator friendly so I would appreciate it if you liked, subscribed and commented but either way if you've watched this video through, if you've watched it partly, I am very very thankful. If you want to watch more stuff that I am doing, I have a Pokey Haunt series that comes out weekly. I'm working, I'm going to start working on the 300 days to this video and maybe also do a 50 day mod series because 100 day might be a little too much. Uh, but for now, that's it. That's all I have to say. I'm sure I'm forgetting something, 
but the major thing is thank you so much for the support thank you so much for watching subscribing and liking if you do and i will see you in the next video Also, quick add-on, I know that uh, not all the names was on the little YouTube um, shrine thing that I did for you guys. I know not everyone who's liked and followed uh, or subscribed is on that. Some people subscribed and commented afterwards, um, so I will be updating those names in the 300 day video. But these ones were the ones that did it as I was making the shrine, if you know what I'm saying. So if your name's not there, don't worry, it will be added.